Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video The legend is back after I think 6 months or 1 year, I'm not exactly sure But something around that <laughs> Into Roblox, okay And we're gonna create the first tutorial after that long time And it's gonna be about how to create iterators uh, Using coroutines in Lua Lazy iterators Which means that you only consume what you need to consume Of memory and processing power to show you what I'm talking about, I'm gonna give you a little example. And by the way, if you're coming from Rust and C++ or something like that, they're called lazy iterators. If you're coming from Python, for example, they're called generator generators, okay? Now, let's actually go ahead, let's create a little function, just as an example. I'm gonna call it characters, and this function give, gets a text as a string, and it gives you back a uh, a table of strings, which is gonna be a table of characters essentially. And there you go. Now, how we can do this? Well, we, first of all, we need some table to store the results in. Okay. Return T. There you go. Now for I is equal to one because Lua starts with the index one. And then the in, in the end is the length of the text. And then we're gonna step up by one. Do and let's go. Now, essentially, gonna go ahead and uh, return. Let's see, return. Uh, oh, sorry, not return. Uh, table dot insert t comma. The value is gonna be string dot dot sub, right? You're gonna give it this string, which is in this case the text, and then i comma i for the start and the end. There you go. Pretty cool. Now, if we say local text is equal to code taco, let's go. Then we say local iterator is equal to characters of text. Uh, well, in fact, it's not iterator currently. Let's just call it uh, chars, you know. Uh, so, yeah. Okay. Uh, let's print chars pretty simply. Now, let's run this up and let's see what we get. All right. We get a table of characters of that string as you can see from that string we have turned it into a table of characters pretty cool huh but the thing is let's say you have a pretty large string and just to simulate that i'm just going to repeat this string n times let's say 1000 times um let's see and as you can see it's pretty large and it's taken a long of long time and probably also a lot of memory uh, to store this this long table you know it's pretty crazy uh, so now the thing is let's suppose you're actually uh, don't want the whole text the all the characters of the text let's say you just want the first characters for example let's say you just want the first character okay let's say characters text um, one so index one okay run now, as you can see, we get one character, the first character, but at what cost? At the cost of generating all the characters of the text. Now, you can see that there is a massive loss uh, and waste of processing power and memory is going on here, okay? And also the time, all right? So you end up with this mess, right? So how we can make this better? How we can make it lazy, lazily evaluated, which means that you only evaluate what you need. You only do, do, do the work that you need to do. Okay, so how we can do that? Well, we can turn this characters function into an iterator of some sort, okay? Uh, how we can do that? Well, we're gonna do some changes. First of all, we don't need any table anymore. We're not gonna store anything, all right? That's what's pretty cool about it. We're not really gonna store anything. And also, if you have some other kind of col collection, like let's say some something other than a table, you can still use this iterator for it because you're no longer using a particular collection, uh, okay? A particular data structure. Uh, le let me show you here. So. Uh, this will actually return now a function and that function will, will get no parameters and it will return for us uh, let's see uh, it will return for us uh, a string okay every time we, we call that function it's gonna give us a new string the the next character essentially now instead of table insert we no longer have any table so let's remove this thing 
Uh, but instead of table insert, we're going to say coroutine.yield, coroutine.yield. And here we go. We started to use coroutines. Let's go. Okay, coroutine.yield. There you go. And you give it the result that you want to give it, which is in this case, the character. And just to make it more understandable, I'm just going to make this into its own variable. Local character is equal to this guy. And there you go. Um... Now, uh, we we still need some uh, stuff, so we're going to return what? We're going to return coroutine.wrap. Dot wrap. This wrap function basically creates a coroutine using coroutine.create, and then it wraps that, it, it creates a function uh, that whenever you call it, it will resume the coroutine until the coroutine yields, and whenever that yield, the coroutine yields, it returns the result, which is in this case the character, and it gives it back to the function caller. And so coroutine.wrap, and of course here you give it some function, essentially. And you do like this, just like that. Now, instead of doing this, we're just going to say this. And now we have chars as an iterator of some sort, right? Uh, in fact, if we say chars right now, you can, oh, what? Hold on. Uh, chars. So we're giving it a characters. Okay, let's let's see what we're gonna get. Print chars, and we're gonna call that function. Let's run this up, and there we go. We got the first character. And in fact, this is lazily evaluated, which means only when we actually call for the next character is that it goes ahead and it processes those characters, and it doesn't store anything really. Yeah, that's what it means that it's lazily evaluated. And there you go. We have just made it much, much better. Now I could also make another, uh, uh, some iterator that actually goes ahead and, or let's say we want to get the nth character, okay? Using that iterator, okay? Of course, lazily evaluated. How we can do that? Well, we're going to uh, make a function called nth, nth, or you can call it whatever. I just called it that. And essentially, it's going to get some a kind of iterator of some sort, right? And that iterator will, of course, be, be a function, I believe. Yeah, function, which can uh, get anything and can return anything. Uh, so there you go. And essentially, we can get some variadic arguments, whichever arguments they give us. In fact, no need, I maybe, I don't know. Let's see. Uh, nth characters. So in this case, we don't need variadic arguments, you know, but just to be general, I'm going to go with that. All right. Next up is what we're going to do. We're going to say return. In fact, we're going to say for i equal to zero, uh, not zero. Uh, let's say one comma. Uh, let's see. Uh, we also need the which n. So n, comma n, comma 1, do. Uh, all right, interesting. Now we're going to say uh, iterator and essentially it's like that. And in fact, I'm going to say n minus 1 so I don't, so I don't consume the last cat, the last, uh, the last thing there. But yeah, let's see what we're going to go with now. Actually, maybe it might be true. But anyways, let's actually return iterator here. Let's return iterator and let's see what's going to happen here. So let's print um, the nth of what? The nth of, let's see, i, comma, or actually what i? Uh, let's say, for example, the character 1, the, the first, uh, yeah, the first character. And let's give it the, the chars iterator, which is just a function essentially. And we don't need to give it any extra arguments there. So let's see what this will give us. It give us a O, which is the second character. The second character, which means I believe we have to do it like this. In fact, n minus one, C. 
All right, so as you can see right now, it's actually working. It gives us the first character. If I say the second, the third character, for example, D, there you go. Now it's consuming the iterator up to it finds the nth item, okay? Now, of course, this is consuming the iterator, okay? Um, so, yeah, that's essentially it. If you need, I guess, more videos like this, and going further about uh, iterators and stuff like that, let me know in the comment section. And just to, as a final example, we could make a function called, let's say, uh, enumerate, which takes in an iterator too. And an iterator will be, and instead of actually, you know, doing this multiple times, we can create a custom type. We could call this type, uh, Iterator and this type iterator is equal to this stuff. Okay, and now instead of doing this, I can just say this. Okay, same thing here now. Iterator, and there you go. Now, this will also give us an iterator, I believe, right? Yep, 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 yep. So this will give us an iterator and there you go. So how are we going to do this? Of course, whenever we're creating an iterator, we need this return coroutine dot wrap and blah, 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 blah. Anyways, next up is, um, we're going to go ahead and, oh, oh yeah. We need to store a variable called I local, oops, local i is equal to zero and then essentially uh, whenever it's called we can say coroutine dot yield and yield what we're gonna yield two items which is gonna be first of all i and by the way we're gonna say i plus equal one i plus equal one here and coroutine dot yield i comma item of the iterator so we're just gonna uh, consume the iterator and just to be more general I'm gonna actually allow the user to give some uh, arguments here if he wants to and there you go although the problem there is that we cannot actually pass in arguments from here we can only pass them from here so uh, there is two solutions here. We can either make it so when we call the iterator every time we give it some arguments and it just gets passed directly. Otherwise, if you want it to get passed from the time you create the iterator, then you can say something like this and then local args is equal to, uh, you know, you pack it into a table, then you unpack it here, essentially. Impact args and there you go. But I'd rather not use it this way. I'm just going to keep it like this anyway. Um, so, yeah. And you can, in fact, go ahead and do this. It's fine. Uh, and there you go. Now, in fact, instead of int, uh, or uh, actually, let's keep int. But, in fact, let's say local x or whatever. I'm so bad at naming stuff, but anyway. Enumerate. Enumerate what? We're going to give it some iterator, which is in this case chars. Chars, comma, or in fact, we don't even need. Let's just go ahead and say this. Uh, let's just inline it. Let's just call it chars, because why not? Okay, enumerate characters, comma. Um, yeah, we don't need any stuff right now. Okay, lovely. Now, let's actually go ahead and say inf three, the third element, uh, and yeah, chars, right, exactly. Uh, run. Cannot resume dead coroutine. Huh? Um, oh yeah, I see, see, because in fact here, since this is, this should run as long as, as possible. So let's just make it a while true do. Expected identifier. Oops. 
and let's run. And let's go. As you can see, we got three and D. So essentially you enumerate uh, the thing, right? So let's say, and let me just show you the other way of doing it, which is just say chars. This is kind of like similar to uh, rust.next and the Python next function. Essentially print chars, chars, chars. And there he goes. As you can see, the enumerate function uh, actually also an iterator, which gives us the the iterators items and also one, two, three, four, etc. Okay, pretty cool stuff, isn't it? And we can also make this uh, stop when the iterator returns nil. You know, when it yields nil. So we could say. And oh, by the way, we don't have to actually put this here. Uh, we can just put it uh, somewhere around here, right? And you can notice something, which is all the iterators uh, actually have return coroutine.wrap function. So what we could do, we could say local function iter, you know, and then this guy returns coroutine.wrap, you know, and it essentially uh, takes in the iterator or iterable iterable or something like that anyway uh, iterator function essentially but there is no need uh, we're just it, it's essentially just coroutine dot wrap but anyway so as you can see pretty cool stuff indeed we could also create another crazy thing which is called let's say um, let's say local function zip okay you could have right now two iterators iterator one iterator two oops uh, let's say iterator one here and iterator two uh sorry iterator two and this is also going to be an iterator of some sort uh right and uh and by the way instead of hmm now, the thing is, we could make it so that the iterator takes nothing. Because in fact, uh, until now, all the iterators doesn't take anything. Now, if you want to do that, you can do this and then, you know, make a generic T. And of course, that gives it a T value right there. There you go. Pretty cool stuff, huh? isn't it? Um, now, of course, you should make sure to not do such a thing anymore uh, since all iterators doesn't take any parameters in this case, as you can see. Zip. Um, oops. Do local function zip. There you go. Now, how we can do this? Well, of course, again, return coroutine.wrap. End. And right now, we're going to actually go ahead and do while true do. Uh, we don't need this anymore, but here we're gonna say coroutine dot yield iterator one comma iterator two, just like that. Pretty cool, huh? Now we could say, hmm, we could also say range. We could create a function, uh, an iterator called range. Okay, so local function. Let's say range, and. Uh, the range function will essentially be, uh, 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 it will take a minimum, a maximum and a step, just like that. And of course, we're gonna return coroutine.wrap function. There you go. And then we're essentially gonna say a while true do coroutine.yield. And instead of this, Actually, not while true do, sorry. We're gonna make a loop for i is equal to minimum, comma max, comma step, do. And then essentially we're gonna protein dot yield um, i. Simple as that. And, 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 and now we can in fact go ahead in the enumerate function, we can actually take this up. Uh, after the range and stuff like that and instead of you know doing it like this we could do it pretty easily just by using the zip function so return 
zip and you give it two iterators here we're going to give it a range of from let's say from zero to math dot uh infinity you know not sure if that's a thing uh is that a thing hold on what uh no uh oh sorry it's called huge <laughs> forgot okay so math dot huge so and the nice thing is that although this range is supposed to go into math.huge, but it's not gonna go crazy because in fact, we're taking one step by step, okay? Uh, we're lazily evaluating all of this. So range from zero to math.huge, uh, comma one, and do what? The second iterator will be uh, the, the actual iterator that they gave us essentially. Now, as you can see right now, I reused iterator inside of iterators and there we go, pretty crazy stuff. Now let's see if this actually works. Uh, zip, uh, pretty cool. Let's actually run this and see what's gonna happen. And there you go, it's still working the same way. Although it should not start from zero actually, it should start from one. And in fact, we could also add just like, um, just like Python where you have, Actually, I don't remember well, to be honest, but uh, we could create a new in private window and we're going to go to uh, Python enumerate. I remember there was some optional argument there, which was pretty cool. So, mm -hmm. oh man, uh, enumerate. Uh, I want the documentation, bro. Come on, come on, come on. Pretty slow connection. Okay. Built in functions. Uh, let's look for enumerate. There you go. All right. It's called start and it's optional. All right. So we could also have the same thing start and it's going to be a number which is optional. And in fact, oh yeah. And then we're going to say start is equal to start or one. Essentially, the default value will be one. Uh, and then here we could say start. There you go. Pretty cool, huh? Um, you could also have an end, an optional end value if you want to. End value. Oh, sorry, I cannot actually call it end. Let's call it finish. And then essentially, we're just gonna copy this guy finish finish or here math.huge and we could call it finish and here there is a step we could do the same thing with step so step is equal to step or uh one and here we could have comma step is a number and there you go now i can either give it that stuff in the enumerate function after the iterator uh, like, let's say if I wanted to start uh, the enumeration from two, as you can see, it starts from two, three, four, and I can also tell it to end at somewhere to end, for example, at three, let's say, run. Now, as you can see, two, three, and then it says nil. Um, so, yeah. And we can also say the step function we could say one or it say something like oh sorry we could say null here so it uses the default value and then we could go two by two right or something like that and there you go two four six let's go uh just for of course the, the that's that thing right there okay pretty cool stuff isn't it uh all right lovely stuff look at that next up we could also, by the way, did I use the zip function? Yeah, I used it here in Emirate. Okay, so zip essentially gives you, it's kind of like, really, yeah, hold on a second. I mean, if I, I never actually tried this, but let me just see one thing pretty quick. Uh, if you actually say zip, and let's say you give it a range, let's say from one to 10, and maybe a range from, minus 10 uh minus 10 to zero or something like that i don't know um what's going on here by the way i think i need another there you go do let's see what's gonna happen here print i comma v 
I think this is added. Okay, let's run this. Oh, uh, oh yeah, it needs some special stuff that I I don't want to go in into right now. But yeah, there you go. Pretty cool, lovely. Uh, we could also make a skip function that essentially just goes ahead and it skips some values. Now it's kind of like int, but it just it's essentially like int. Right, but it doesn't do that return iterator at the end. So in fact, we could also say same thing here. Uh, say skip, and here we're gonna just say skip n, and here we're gonna return the last iterator. Of course, here you also should give it the iterator. And, uh, and there you go, pretty cool. And of course, comma that. And in fact, we, we have said that the iterators won't take any parameters, so we can get rid of this stuff right here. And there you go. Now this will give us a uh, some some t value. And by the way, why didn't I actually give it the t values here? Uh, oh, sorry. In fact, we could say no strict. In if I remember strict, like, there you go, okay. So as you can see, I need to give it the actual uh, value, which is gonna be some t generic. And of course, since I'm using generics, I have to do something like this. Uh, but uh, it should be, in this case, it should be a number. So yeah, a skip should be a number in this case, since we're saying n minus one, I believe, right? Oh, sorry, uh, what, what we're doing here, hold on. No, no, it's fine, it's fine, yeah, n, here n should be a number, okay. Next up is here, there should be some t value. And of course, it's just gonna be a generic, same thing here. You're just gonna copy this guy, and as you can see, we're using generics even here. Luau generics, pretty cool stuff. Minimum, it should be a number. Maximum, a number. And step, also a number. And iterator should have a generic. And the, the thing is though, we have to think about it. No, actually it's not like that, hold on. So yeah, it's gonna be an iterator, but the range, what it takes and what it returns, it also gives us an iterator, but of what type, of some type, uh, well, it actually just gives us an iterator of type number, right? An iterator of type number, okay. Now enumerate t will give us an iterator. Hmm. An iterator, I believe. So it's gonna be a zip. What is zip? Zip is an iterator of t, okay. So iterator of what? Of another iterator, I believe. Hold on, what? No, uh, they could be different. They could be different types. So let's go ahead and do that. T and U. And they shouldn't, they are not necessarily have the same type essentially. Now I can essentially go ahead and say, iterator, and by the way, what it's going to return? It's going to return uh, iterator of, uh, let's see, T, I believe. Oh, yeah, and iterator. Actually, no, T and U. It's, yeah, it's going to give us a T and U. But what? Hold on. It's actually an iterator of T and U, right. Maybe a tuple like this? Not exactly sure how Luo tuple works. In fact, if we look into uh, Roblox Luo type checking, we may find something there. Uh, not this, uh, this, 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 okay. Uh, let's go ahead and let's look for, uh, not this, bro, uh, here. 
Okay. As you can see, strict, that is that. Uh, can I see tuple? Well, what? There's no tuples here? Well, I have no idea how tuples work here. Uh, what about variadic? Yeah, variadic. Um, T, comma, okay, so it's actually, what? What, what, what? Um, what's going on here? What's wrong though? Error type, curtain.yield, iterator one, iterator two, iterator tu. Not exactly sure to be honest how tuples work in Lua, uh, but there you go. I think you got the point unless um, that's a bit of type checking. <laughs> So yeah, for now, I'm just gonna remove this. I don't know how to do it exactly, but yeah, start. Oh, that, that this is not an iterator, bro, an iterator. This is a number. Oh, sorry, not that. Oh, what? Range? Could not be converted into a number. I mean, I already have done that. Or math are huge. Oh, this is so weird. But anyway, it should work out just fine. I mean, run. Run, run, run. And where is that thing? Oh, I have to print it. Print chars. Just to make sure everything's still working. It should be, but yeah, there you go. And that was it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and see you later. Goodbye, everyone.